hello, I am Lisa Hennessy, and this is episode 66 of Knit, Pray, Crochet. And I'm not sure if I'm going to title this video My Sweater Saga because I am about done with this sweater. I did pick it back up this week, um, but what I realized is I knit very pretty. I don't know if you see, when I do, when I throw, when I throw my yarn, it looks very pretty. Um, and I did figure out when I started to pick up my um, second arm and do the decreases, I did them incorrectly on this one. And that's why it is so skinny at the top of the arm because I was supposed to do the decrease every 12 rows. And I don't know how I missed that, but I did every other row. Um, and that's why I got so skinny on the top. And I didn't, of course, I'm not going to tear it out. I don't tear things out. So then I started sleeve number two, you know, and I realized I did my decreases wrong, but I got to match it to do the other sleeve. So I did it the same, but I thought, you know what? I just want to knock the sleeve out. And rather than throw my yarn, I'm going to do continental. Well, okay, that looks awful. Um, you can really see the decrease here that was incorrect. But if you look at my arms, this is the one arm. And this is the other arm. This is a lot thinner than this arm. And it and the stitches look so much prettier than on this one. So I'm going to finish this. I don't know when I'm going to finish it. It's definitely going to be donated. I'm going to stick to cardigans with the bulky yarn because for some reason I can do those and they look fine. Um, I did a, a cardigan called the Mimico cardigan and it I'm able to wear that and I like it. So I'm going to, when the North Texas yarn call is coming up, in April. So I'm going to buy more bulky yarn because I bought the, um, the book for that uh, designer. I'll have to put it in my show notes, but there were several patterns. So I might try a different version of that, but I, this is going to be donated. It'll probably um, fit a nice little preteen girl because that's about the size it's going to be. So I'm done with that. And then my Lion Brand Fair Isle yarn. I just, I, I did, um, this was the one that I, I had made and shared with you. I, soaked it in some fabric softener and I blocked it and it's still a little itchy for me. So I am going to give this as a gift because look at the hat that I made. The other hat I'm keeping for myself because the hat for some reason is on my hair and it doesn't itch me. But look at how good these go together. Can you see that? Here's the my cowl and there's my hat. They look great together. So I think this will be a good gift to give to one of my friends for a birthday or Christmas next year. I'm going to put that aside because I love the way it looks. And then with what was left over after I finished that hat, I was able to get one more headband. So for $5.99 from the Lion Brand Woolies Fair Isle, I got two hats, a cowl, and a headband. I think that's pretty good for $5.99. And I am still have my gray um, skein that I need to finish up. I've gotten two hats out of that. I will probably get another at least two or three hats, at least two more adult hats and maybe a child's hat. So I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna work on that this week or not. Um, I also, my, I have a grandchild that's going to be born in the middle of March, and so the baby shower is February. They're doing like a, they call it a sprinkle for the second baby, and they are not finding out whether they're having a boy or a girl. It's my son and his wife. Um, so I made a neutral blanket. I used the Burnett Baby Blanket Dapple. And what, let me see what color this is because I really like the way it's turned out. It says um, Skipping Stone. That's the name of the color, and it's just kind of like a ombre. And this is what it looks like. And all I did was the garter stitch. Um, I can put it in the show notes. I cast on, I used size 13 needles. So this, it knit up pretty quick. Um, I cast on three stitches. I knit the first stitch. I increased the second stitch all the way to the end. Um, I knit and I just basically, um, I did it um, until I think I had 90 stitches on it because I bought three skeins of yarn because I've, what I've done in the past, I, I knit one skein and then I start my decreases and I've run out of yarn. So instead, this time when I got to 90 stitches, then I started my decrease and I had enough yarn and enough left over. I'm going to make a little lovey. And so I started that. I think I might have done a video on with instructions on how to do this. If not, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, I did this on size 11 needles. I cast on 30 stitches and I'm going to knit it, I think, until it's 12 inches long. Whatever this, I think, what I'm going to measure this length and whatever that is, I'll measure it the same. So it's a little square. I know I have uh, enough for one. So I'll do that, finish that. They'll probably finish today. I'm actually taking this on a Sunday morning because um, 
it's been kind of a rough week with my mom. Um, she's had laryngitis and um, it's just been a lot. I, I'll talk about that with, in my devotion. Um, and then, so I've done that. Oh, and then I decided, you know, because I think I shared with you, I bought this yarn, um, this Queensland Karen. So I thought, oh, I'll make a cardigan, you know, but I'm done making cardigans. Right now I'm done making those cardigans. The effortless cardigan is not so effortless for me. For some reason, I have a hard time following directions sometimes. Actually, the one that I made in red, it turned out just fine. I could have kept it, but I didn't like when I ran out of yarn and I had to change dye lots. I could tell, no one else probably could, but I could. Instead, what I did is I Googled this, I mean, I went on Ravelry to see what patterns were made with this yarn, and I found this one by Two of Wands. It's called a Summer League Cutoff, and it's a little t-shirt. I don't know if you can see that right here. And it's cut off where it rolls up at the bottom, but what's nice about this, it's knit in the round, and I can keep going for whatever length I want. I can try it on, and I don't think you've got to pick up some the sleeves on this either. I don't it, and I did. It's a, I'll put the link on it. You can um, get it for free, but I paid for the paid version because it, I need step by step instructions, and it is step by step on here, um, fifteen pages worth, and that's what I need when I'm making a sweater. So I'm going to use this yarn for that, and at the bottom, rather than it roll up, I might do a ribbing. I don't know. I just think it look really cute with some high waisted pants or jeans. Um, especially with this color because it's got looks almost like denim in it. So I will at some point start that. Um, I don't know when, um, maybe this week, maybe not. I got to finish my grandbaby's lovey. And then I also, we have a local yarn store in the DFW area called Fiber Lady. They spin their own yarn, dye their own yarn. They also carry other yarn. They have a storefront and they just moved last week to a, they were kind of in an industrial area and now they're in a strip center. So they're, easier to find, easier to get to, and they'll have more classes and so forth. So I, I'll put a link to their to their um, website. I love their yarn. I, I make it, I do my chemo head scars with it. And so I did go by there this week and I helped them kind of get some stuff on the walls before they reopen, but they are reopened now. <clears throat> this is the bamboo, look how pretty that is. This is the uh, Makimo. And I bought this cause I'm gonna make another chemo head scarf. And my, you know, my neighbor, like I said, she's got a 40 or 50% chance of losing her hair. She may not lose it. Sorry about that. And so I'm just going to um, make, make these. And if she doesn't need them, we'll be able to bless other people um, when she goes to the, her chemo treatment. So that is, those are my knitting ones for the week. My sweater, I am going to finish it. I just, I'm really, I don't, I, then I switched after I was knitting in the round continental. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go back to throwing. So it's really gonna, I'm hoping I might, even though it's acrylic, I might be able to at least block the arm to match the other arm. <clears throat> I can only hope. But those were my knitting ones for the week. Um, I like to read my blog post for knitpraysheer.com, and it is called, What Rules Your Heart? And the scripture is Colossians 3.15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. And I'm going to... Oh gosh, I'm gonna make sure I have a Kleenex. I might cry, I might not when I'm when I'm reading my blog post. And typically, I don't write about this. It doesn't come to my mind until June um, because that's the anniversary date of my death uh, anniversary date of my first husband's death. But something just kind of triggered it this week. Um, and whenever my first husband died, one of the things I wanted was to meet somebody, an adult child whose mother had been pregnant with them when their father died. And I never did, because I just thought, I just need some guidance of how am I gonna talk to my daughter about this? And um, I never did meet that person. To this day, still have not met that person. So, you know, it's just, I had to kind of wing it. You know, I wasn't real sure what to do. Uh, well, a few weeks ago, my daughter had shared with me, you know, some feelings have kind of resurfaced about her not ever really getting to know her dad. And she's 28 now. So, you know, I did my best to make sure that she had male figures in, in her life. Um, my dad was around. We lived with my parents for that first year. In fact, I'm gonna um, post a picture of her when she was an infant laying on my dad's chest. I mean, I really, and then with my, you know, I remarried and I had a, a, she had a father in her life. So, but you know, deep down, how could that not affect her? You know, I knew deep down that it had to affect her, um, but she didn't talk about it. So I didn't, you know, I didn't really bring it up. I thought we were dealing with it. Okay, and, I, and we were, um, but, you know, I think maybe, I mean, because I can't 
cannot even imagine. I mean, I was such a daddy's girl. I can't imagine not ever having my dad in my life. Even though my daughter had my dad and my husband, I just can't imagine, you know, my dad not ever being a part of my life. He helped mold me into who I am today. I'm so thankful for that relationship. And so, you know, I don't know why um, this has kind of, you know, come to light with my daughter, but it could be because she's 28, which is the same age I was when my first husband died. Now her and her husband are starting to talk about having a family. So, you know, maybe that's why this has kind of surfaced for her. Um, I don't know. But what I do know is that that kind of triggered something with me. And I realized my grandson Lincoln is the exact same age. My son Brandon was when my first husband died. And he is so cute. I mean, it's such a cute age. I just love watching the videos. I love seeing my son and his wife, um, you know, interact with them and just see how his little personality is developing. And I will be totally honest with you. There are days when I get a 6.30 a.m. phone call because that is when my phone gets out of sleep mode. And my mom may have tried to call me before, but it just automatically, I think, just rings one time and goes to voicemail. But I'll get that phone call and I'll, and rather than go to my morning devotion, I go to my Google photos and I um, look at photos of Lincoln because that just kind of turns my angst into joy. I just, I'm happy, I'm smiley because, oh, look at that cute little face. How could I not just be lifted up from looking at that cute little face? Well, that happened this week because like I shared earlier, my mom has laryngitis and so my phone calls have been increasing because I, I told her, I so said, you really need to stay in your room. My mom is her worst enemy, her own worst enemy because she, she, Monday, she had a call. And so I was able to get some medicine, but she didn't have laryngitis until she woke up Tuesday morning. So I said, you need to sit, stay in your room. I got her this tea called throat coat. And I had her drinking that tea because if I, I knew if she's in her room, she's going to stay hydrated and get plenty of fluids. Well, she woke up Wednesday morning, her voice sounded a lot better. So what did she do? She stayed downstairs, which I'm glad she wants to be downstairs and interacting. But when she's downstairs, she doesn't get enough fluids. And when you have that kind of drainage and laryngitis, you got to drink plenty of fluids. So then Thursday morning, she woke up, couldn't talk again. Friday, same thing. So when she's in her room and her friend is there keeping her company, but, you know, on, especially on the weekends, she likes to watch her court TV and those shows aren't on on Saturday. So I'm getting these phone calls constantly. Um, you know, so I've gone from my one or two phone calls back up to 10 or 15 or 20 and having to, you know, monitor them. My husband told me yesterday, he goes, I'm going to get you a shirt that says complaint department closed because all she was doing was calling to complain yesterday. And I was like, oh, uh, so anyway, uh, but so I digress about my mom, but you know, where the enemy likes to get in your head um, is he likes to make you feel guilty. And so I went from having that peace from looking at my grandson's pictures to all of a sudden I got this memory of my son when he was um, 28 months old. Again, you know, it's right after my first husband died, coming up to my bed and um, saying in his sweet little voice, Mama, I'm hungry. And I just couldn't get out of bed to feed my own son. And I said, go, go ask Grandma. And because I just couldn't get out of bed. And so I started feeling guilty because I thought, oh, Brandon was at such a cute age. Look at how Brandon and Mallory are enjoying uh, Lincoln. And I couldn't even enjoy that time in my son's life. But then you know what God did in his grace and mercy? He, were, he took that guilt that I was feeling and he turned it into po something positive. He, he brought to mind, he brought it to like Lisa. Yes, that was a time in your life that you weren't able to help care for your son. But your mother, I know she may be a lot right now, and I know you. there is a lot of selfish and self-centeredness that you tend to focus on. But remember, this time in your life when she stepped up to the plate and took care of your son, and she loved him and took care of him when you didn't have the strength or energy. And so... I just look at God's love, grace, and mercy, how he was able to take that moment of me just beating myself up and turning it back onto him and reminding me 
of who my mother was during that time in my life. And I needed that because it's been a lot this week. Like I said, she has been a lot. Even her, her friend goes, oh, Lisa, you've got your hands full. And I go, me, what about you? Because he's the one having to, you know, bring her her food. And he doesn't have to, but he does. He's been really sweet helping um, take care of her. But, you know, her negative attitude has been draining. But God knows how that has been affecting me. And that's why he reminded me of that time in my life where she was there for me. And our church has uh, started a new series called Hearing God. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I hear you loud and clear. These are the times, I mean, he's given me three times the word positive. And he's telling me, Lisa, you need to focus on the positive. Letting the peace of Jesus rule my heart, just like Colossians 3.15 says, that's the only way I can do it. Even though we may not always have peace on earth, we can always find peace in Jesus. Trusting in Jesus may not calm the chaos around us, but it will calm it within us. As his peace fills our hearts and minds, we can live the life God intended for us. Let me end with my prayer. Father God, forgive me when I let the, eyes, the lies of the enemy shift my focus, redirect my thoughts to you. Help me to be still enough to hear your voice during times of distress. Let the peace of Christ rule my heart. Thank you for your steadfast love. I lift those up to you who are letting feelings of inadequacy keep them from pursuing the path where you are leading them. I pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm sorry. Today was a little emotional for me. Typically, this does not happen until, you know, certain times of the year, but that's what it is with grief. You never know what's going to hit you. And don't ever feel guilty. Don't ever apologize for crying when something is bothering you because that's God's way of letting us heal is for the for the tears to flow. And I don't, I'm not ashamed of, um, you know, like I said, you know, I did feel that guilt with my son, but the reality is I enjoyed moments with him. I have so many pictures of him being cute and in his dress up. Um, and I, in fact, I'll show you a picture. He was so cute. He used to dress up and I did embrace that and my parents embraced it, it but it just wasn't the same as having my husband there with me, with my son and my daughter. But by the grace of God, he put a special lane in my life that helped him for 28 years he, or 23 years he's been in my life, but he's been in my children's life for longer. Um, but he's, he's been able to enjoy that. And my daughter was two when we met. And so he's, he was able to enjoy those cute moments that we're experiencing with Lincoln. But again, just remember God loves you. You matter and keep knitting, praying, crocheting and sharing the love of Jesus. And I almost forgot. I gave away a prayer shawl this week. One of the, um, so I need to start, I need to start another prayer shawl. In fact, when I was at um, when I was at Fiber Lady, I got some more yarn to do a prayer shawl. I think I might. Uh, this is one of them. This is the yarn. I've got two of those, so I think I'm going to start a prayer shawl with that. Um, one of the women in my mom's facility, her husband um, is in a wheelchair, and they have they've probably been there about four or five months, and he passed away last week, and all the family was in the lobby gathering, and I um, had my prayer shawl with me. I went out to my car and got it, and I. Um, let her know I prayed over it and just to wrap her arms around her uh, and just know that that was prayed over and God loves her and to feel his loving arms around her. So I was able to do that. And, you know, those are things that make a difference. If you make prayer shawls, be like me. Try to keep one on hand all the time so that you can bless somebody when you hear about it. And I just leave it in my car in case I hear of a need. Um, God bless you. I will see you next week for episode 67.